Today we're looking at the cheapest hot tent pellet stove that I found on Amazon. This thing is pretty sweet. It's got a large hopper to hold your pellets. It's got a nice viewing window right here. Oh, and it's got a built-in oven. So let's make a cup of coffee and talk about this pellet stove. Cause I'm pretty darn excited about this guys. Why do I have a wooden platform and a wooden stove jack in this hot tent you may ask? I wanna protect the floor with a floating hot tent, right guys? I don't wanna pop it because of the heat from the bottom of this stove. So I got a platform. I also made a wooden stove jack that connects to the poles of the tent to give it more stability in case with the waves it's moving, that will hold it still and maybe keep the stove from tipping over or moving too much. That's my hopes because you need to be safe in a floating hot tent, right? <laughs> I mean, safety's number one priority. <laughs> This stove features a really big hot plate on top. It's rather thick. I'd say it's a quarter inch thick steel. It's got nuts and bolts going through it and three rows to make sure that it doesn't warp because this thing throws heat. I, I can't tell you how hot this is. It's so hot. I have a thermometer right here underneath the burn chamber. Right now, the top temperature is underneath it. That's 68 degrees. Sitting over here in front of the open door and window, it's 53. Outside right now is 37. Ah! Oh, <laughs> that's warm. Burn count one. It didn't really burn me, but it was close. All the pipes, the hopper, and the pellet burner all collapsed down to fit inside of the stove and then the legs fold in to make a rectangular box. It does not come with a case, but I ended up getting a three pack of these storage containers. Oh boy, oh boy. So what I like about putting it in this box, it protects the glass. I put the back of it down on the bottom and then the glass is facing up. And there's about, there's enough room for the pipes to sit on top of the stove before the top, and then it closes flat too. So this box is actually the perfect size for this stove. Already the oven's up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's good baking temperature right there. On this end, you have the lighting door. I found the easiest way to light this stove is with a blowtorch. You just open the door, you start flaming the pellets, and they kick off. I wanna say from lighting it to a full burn, it was about a minute and a half. It gets going really fast with the rocket effect. And what's cool about this stove, it's two chambers inside. So the flame goes this way, ouch. Burn count one. I didn't touch it. I was just close. So the flame goes this way. It goes through a port going that way. Then it comes along the back of the stove and then up through the chimney and out. Underneath the burn chamber is the ash catch. It has a damper. I haven't used the damper for the ash catch yet. I don't know why it's there, but when you fill it up with pellets, pellets do fall down into the ash chamber and maybe that's why. Coffee's done, cheers. The stove comes with two tools. It's got a poker tool. I've used this to clean out pellets from the ash catch at the bottom, once you pull that out, some pellets tend to fall behind it and you need to get those out in order for it to close properly. So that's what this is for. You can scrape them right out. And then it comes with this handle. This is used to move the locks, the door locks, at this slot right here that fits in all of the, the little slots. The door locks and the dampers. And then since it's got this 90 degree angle, it's also used, frick. It's also used as a handle for the oven and the ashtray. Once it starts expanding a little bit, it's a little tough to start moving stuff around. And it's hot. Burn count too. Jeez. The oven is definitely a little finicky once it starts to heat up and gets hot. I mean, you really need gloves. All right, I'm back with some cheap gloves. I don't know if you can see this, but it's not closed all the way. I added a damper pipe to mine. I'm just gonna tone it down for a second, see if I can get this closed. Frick. Oh. 
Burn count three. The oven is a little finicky. Definitely finicky. Maybe you don't even have to close it all the way. Just slide it in and out as you will. There's only a tiny gap and it doesn't look like it affected the heat much. Uh, Let's turn that back up. Damn it, burn count four. <laughs> the oven has a damper on the front side of it or on the opposite side. So if it gets too hot or you don't want it to be that hot, you can open up that damper and allow some air into it and cool down the oven. This stove is pretty darn cool, guys. Let me know what you think about this pellet stove. Just getting started with my testing of this stove. I really like how it doesn't get too hot underneath it. I wanted this pellet stove for this floating hot tent. That's right, floating hot tent. You've seen it here first. You heard it here first. And it works great. I, the oven at the bottom really makes it so that minimum heat escapes from the bottom. I made this wooden platform just in case to protect the floor, to protect the raft. Hopper, this, they claim this fits about 15 pounds of pellets. And that's about right. I get about three hopper loads out of 40 pound pellet bags. They also claim that it can burn to, from four to six hours. I've gotten anywhere from two and a half to five and a half hours with a hopper full of pellets. Ripping roaring like this, you get about three and a half hours. Dampen down is when you start to get more time out of it. And then even if you dampen the door all the way down, the door damper, once it gets hot, it's a little sticky sometimes. Right now it's not so bad, but once it's burning for hours, that does get a little hot and a little hard to turn. You definitely need this tool to turn all of the stuff on the stove. But even dampened all the way down, it's still got a pretty big burn. Speaking of the big burn, the flame pattern on this stove looks amazing. It goes, it goes across the window and then it spirals through the, the circle chamber into the back side of the stove and it just looks really cool. There's a few things that I don't like about this stove. The pellet hopper, it all collapses down flat, right? And then it stores inside of the oven. But I feel like it's got too many gaps all the way around it. Like this needs to be a solid piece of steel, I feel. In one of my hopper tests, I was adding, I was just trying to get a longer burn out of it. So I added this piece of grate at the bottom of the burner to allow for less pellets to drop through the burner into the ash chamber. I felt like it cooled the burn down so much that it started burning up the chamber, up the hopper, and it was glowing red right around here. You couldn't see fire in it, and there was no carbon monoxide escaping, because I had been testing it with a carbon monoxide detector, and peak is still zero. And that's only happened in one of my testing. I had the damper closed on the pipe, I had the pellets restricted, and I felt like it just wasn't hot enough to make the pellets drop fast enough. So I don't know how dampening the stove down will affect how the pellets burn and how safe the stove is. So if you end up getting the stove, make sure you test it out a whole lot at home and figure out all of its quirks before you take it out into the field. There's gaps, since the whole top comes off the stove, and that's how you get all the pipes into the middle to, for storage, there's gaps right here where the, where the top slides to this back lip. Depending on how you put the top on, this gap can be bigger or smaller. You definitely wanna make sure you get that top on completely by pushing it against this back wall before you lock it in on the backside. That minimizes the gap here. There's also a gap, ow, oh, frig, burn count five. There's also a gap right here where the glass meets the stove. It sucks in air right there. I don't know if that's by design or if it's a flaw and it should be closed right there. I'm not sure. I first saw this pellet stove for sale by Nature Hike. The only two differences I can see between this and the Nature Hike model, Nature Hike has a, the burn chamber is adjustable. I believe it has nuts and bolts through here so you can adjust it, not while it's burning, but I believe before you burn it, you can adjust this burn chamber for the amount of pellets that it's burning at once. So the whole chamber is not down into the burn chamber and you can burn less pellets effectively having a smaller flame is my visual analysis of it. I don't know because I don't have that stove. Then the Nature Hike one also has a table, that a shelf that comes off the front of it. This one does not have it. Those are the only two differences I can see between this and the Nature Hike one. 
the Nature Hike pellet stove is almost $700. This one I bought for $270 with $30 shipping, so it's $300. It's less than half the price of the Nature Hike one, and it's got two different two differences between the two. Bah. If you have the Nature Hike one, let me know. Frig! Burn count six. If you have the Nature Hike one, let me know if you have a gap on one side of this glass and whether or not it's on this side or the burn chamber side. I have it on this side. I don't know, maybe the instructions tell me to flip it around, I'm not positive. Also, if you have the Nature Hike one, let me know if how tight these pieces fit together. There's little gaps all the way around it. I'm assuming the Nature Hike one does that too, but maybe it doesn't. I may end up welding this solid in the future, I might. Depending on my testing and how the pellets start burning without my modifications to it. So this is just the start of my testing of this hot tent pellet stove. Let me know what you guys think. If you're interested in the stove, it's currently $300, like I said. I would jump on it before the price goes up if you're interested in a pellet stove, but definitely test it out and use it a lot at home before you take it out into the field, especially if you make a floating hot tent.